a new security vulnerability was introduced in OpenSSL version 3.0.4 titled Heap Memory Corruption with RSA Private Key Operation. And this one is really scary, right? Because you can trigger it, trigger it really easily. Because if you have, if your Cypher suite happened to use an RSA signature, just establishing a TLS connection with the server, right, will trigger, if the server have 3.0.4, they will have to use their private key to sign the message coming back from the TLS server, hello, right? And as a result, that will cause the memory corruption. That could also cause a possible remote uh, code execution. But what what really is nasty is the possible crash of the server. I thought this was very interesting and I wanted to discuss it. Let's jump into it. So this comes from the OpenSSL Security Advisory back on July 5th, 2022. Heap memory corruption with RSA private key operation CVE 2022-2274. Hi, and I think I know a, a lot of uh, the, these advisories or label almost everything as high, but I think this is, and I am sometimes I disagree with some of them, but this one is clearly a high, you know, especially if you have this particular CPU architecture, you know, let's jump into it. Uh, the OpenSSL 3.0.4 release introduced a serious bug in the RSA implementation for x86-64 CPU supporting the AVX512 IFMA instructions. I know this sounds confusing, but it's going to be clear. I, did, I didn't know what that was five minutes ago either, so don't worry about it. This issue makes the RSA implementation with 2048-bit two, private keys incorrect on such machines and memory corruption will happen during the computation. As a consequence of the memory corruption, an attacker may be able to trigger a remote code execution on the machine performing the computation or just crash the server. I mean, the moment you have memory corruption, a crash might happen, right? If you have OpenSSL 304, that's that's the first condition, right? If you have 111 or other stuff, 102, you're not affected at all. If you have that, you're good. But if you have 304, that's not enough. You should have 304 and you should have a CPU that supports this uh, complex instruction set uh, system which is this AVX512. You might say, what is that? We're going to come and come and discuss that. You see, uh, cryptography, when you do cryptography and you do public key cryptography, you use exponent shells and modular algorithm all the time. And doing these operation in the general purpose CPU, you know, using uh, RESC, reduce instruction sets, you know, like using addition and normal multiplication, this basic operation can be expensive. So Intel actually introduced a new uh, CPU that supports a specific instruction, which I think they, they call these CPUs complex instruction sets, CISC, right? So they introduced a baked in instruction that does this complex stuff their RSA that does all of that stuff, right? You know, multiplication, modulo, uh, power, exponents, all this fancy stuff that security people do. What OpenSSL 304 did is started consuming uh, this instruction set if your CPU supports it. That's what they did effectively in this particular issue. That's what they did. In this particular issue, this is the issue where we found the bug, but this is where we discovered it. The work was, let's support this particular CPU, right? Because it's actually much faster to do this operation in a single CPU, in a single instruction in the CPU, and instead of doing it, I don't know, as a multiplication and an exponential and doing everything in sort of a normal multiple instructions. Make sense? So OpenSSL started supporting that, and they introduced a bug in the process. Uh, the, she, Roya, discovered the bug and uh, gave a repro case. And he says, "Hey, I have this particular CPU, and this only happens when I have when I have this particular CPU." This tells you that 
and you're a programmer, you know that there are multiple code paths that takes place. So why didn't this happen in more normal CPUs? Because it's a completely different code path. In normal CPUs, we're going to use a completely different module that executes the normal code for exponents and modules, right? Using uh, simple instruction sets. Uh, but OpenSSL, when it detects there is a CPU of, I keep forgetting the name, AXV, AVX5512, it immediately shifts into another path, and that basically would execute the code. And that code, apparently, it might have been missed to be tested with RSA, with version, with bit size 2048. So just think, guys, how many possible permutation that we need to test on it's massive right so i don't blame the open ssl team running into these bugs like every now and then and here's the fix you guys here's the fix that uh, she actually uh, installed the fix and the fix is really interesting because the fix is just a division problem here where the factor size is was accidentally sent as in a number of bits where it should have been sent in this special unit, which um, OpenSSL uses, BNU long. And this BNU long is actually kept, it depends on the on the word that is being used, but it could be 16, 32, or 64 bits in size. So the fix here is just divide the number of bits by eight, make them bytes, and divide that number of bytes by the, the size of this unit that the OpenSSL team uses, which is BNU long. And that gives you the number of BNU longs effectively. And that's what you should use. That was the bug, right? So very interesting, a single line of code that fixes it, right? But it, it tells you like, how can you actually trigger this? If you look closely, you know, in a, in, in a traditional Cypher suite. Here's an example of a Cypher suite. You know, Cypher suites, at, at least in TL 1.2 for simplicity, it consists of uh, what? Four parts. The first part is the key exchange algorithm. So this is elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. This is what we use to exchange the key, the symmetric key. And this is the symmetric key encryption algorithm. So this is the guy, right? And the, show, the last one is the message digest uh, authentication, the message authentication code, where we make sure that nobody actually tinkered with the message. And this one is the second part, which is the signature. Anything you send back, the server uses this algorithm and uses its private key to sign the message that is sent so that when, this, when the client gets that message, it uses the server public key to decrypt, to verify the message that it belongs to. So the moment you, as a client, as an attacker, you send a TLS request with this particular signature telling the server, hey, server, I only support this uh, this cipher suite. The server will be forced to use this particular, as assuming it supports it, and it will use its private key. And the moment it uses its private key, it will go through this code path, assuming the server is running on a CPU that supports AX512 instruction cell, the, 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 the complex instruction set that does all this RSA stuff baked into the CPU. Then immediately you're gonna get, you're gonna run into this problem. The server will either crash uh, the client, which is the attacker, can send a bulk of code that the server might actually accidentally execute, causing a remote code execution. Obviously, we didn't see any examples, but that's basically the whole explanation of this basic, this interesting bug. What do you guys think about this? Let me know if your um, uh, thoughts below. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.